What's going on? Happy New Year, everyone. It's Coach Jan here. And today we're going to do rolling. And what I mean by rolling, BJJ, uh, not just Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but I have these mats here set up. And I'm literally just going to roll. And uh, Autumn's going to join me. And uh, I highly recommend getting some mats in your home if you don't have them. Uh, they're super cheap. You can go like to Target or order them online. And they're, they're, they're uh, just great to have. So um, I also want to share this thought. And I was sharing this with Autumn uh, about sparring. And sparring, uh, like I, I, I love sparring, I love uh, competition, etc. But I, ever since I was a teenager, I've had this perspective of sparring. And this perspective of sparring is that uh, you don't spar with people you don't know. <laughs> and that it always made sense to me as a teenager because when you don't have the respect built up with a human being, with another person, um, <clears throat> sparring can turn into fighting very easily. And the goal of your martial training is to actually to avoid fighting, like to use all your skill sets to avoid fighting. So, uh, and and obviously, like I fought semi pro Sancho, I coached the U.S. Tai Chi push hands team, competed at the top level there, and um, and I, I I train a lot of pro fighters, and and I, I have so much love for fighting. But there's a difference between the training aspect, getting yourself your mind ready your spirit ready and having a great rapport with somebody that pushes you, that's awesome. And I love that. I love that about sparring. But just walking into a sparring session and just pairing up with different folks that I don't know, that's never been the thing for me. And um, I've always, you know, uh, barely avoided injury in those moments. And that's not something that I, I uh, you know, when someone's like looking to hurt you because they don't know you because they don't know to love and respect you. In certain ways, that to me is 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 it was a conversation. I thought I'd share that thought with you because um, I do think it's really important. You know, you should love the people that you're training with, and you should love um, pu- helping them achieve a new level by pushing them hard, by giving them your best. I always say when I meet a master, um, I always give the master my best. I don't try to hurt them, but I give them no space. They get nothing from me. And that's why masters, like when they play with me for, let's say, like Tai Chi push hands, grappling, stuff like that, they're like, oh, wow, like you're, you're, you're better than me because I'm literally like one of the best guys that, 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 that's been in the sport for this style of play. And that a lot of people in the Tai Chi community who don't play the sport are like, oh, that's not Tai Chi. And I'm like, well, that, that's okay. <laughs> like there's, you have to be able to hold an opinion or hold a perspective that like my expertise does not negate their expertise at all. And I, I think that, you know, if you really do Tai Chi, you should be evolving to that perspective. Like, you know, someone else's expertise does not negate yours. And really that should go to anything. Um, you know, I think we can all learn from each other. So, but what I do is very, very specific. We're going to do some rolls today because like, you know, what I do requires you to get body slammed on the ground and, um, and to get right back up and get body slammed again. And so, um, you know, shout out to all judo, sambo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, Greco-Roman wrestling, like all of those styles, uh, Swai Zhao, um, Aikido, all the styles that that I've done, my coaches have done and brought me into um, to do this stuff. So here we go. We're going to get on the floor. We're going to do some rolls. Um, <coughs> let's do it. And uh, keep, I have my Superman socks on right now. Happy New Year again, everybody. So here we go. All right. So, again, have your mat here, and just take a second, uplifting heaven, you can do it seated, exhaling down, inhale, draw the breath up, exhale down, let me also check the time, 7, 11, okay, inhaling up, mouth closed, tongue on the ceiling, mouth, exhaling down. So one of the key things about doing um, this type of training, falling, rolling, break falling, etc., uh, is from my perspective of how we utilize breath work and visualization is to melt, have the experience of melting your body into the ground. So to start off slowly so that when you exhale and you're releasing tension into the ground, creating these little, uh, like using, let's say, the forearm as your, your um, uh, <clears throat> as, to break fall, using your forearms to break fall, etc., slapping the mat. While you're doing those kind of things, you're doing your best to slow yourself down so that your perception speeds up and you can feel the ripples through your body. That you're exhaling to move the pressure out of your body so it doesn't get stuck in any one area and cause an injury. 
So from that perspective, allowing yourself to really gently melt into the ground, starting off slowly with these exercises, I highly recommend and I'll show you what I mean right now. So we're gonna just go back and forth and do a really basic uh, rocking back and forth, back and forth, I'm sitting up. And we should probably be doing this on a timer, but you know, we'll just go for, let's say 50. And I'm exhaling, inhaling, keeping my chin tucked. All the time when you fall, you keep your chin tucked down so that you don't crack your head against whatever you're falling onto. So I had a two car accidents, one last year, one the year before. And so I've been really taking the last like year and a half to, to build the body back up uh, after some like wave dynamics go through the body, you know, like the, the impact going through the body. So for me, at these exercises, it's taken me a while to feel really great again. And taking it slow is just a reminder of how you actually want your body to fall. So it's actually a great opportunity to, to slow yourself down, to slow myself down, to just get there. Now, you can start adding in the rolling back and using the hands, just the forearms. Again, there are different schools of thought on slapping the ground, meaning that slapping the, break falling, slapping the ground in real life or on concrete not on a mat can help, you know, potentially damage your hand, break your hand, etc. So there are some folks who don't slap, who keep a fist and only hit their forearm. I'm going to do my best today to be respectful of neighbors downstairs and not slam. So I'm going to be just gently rolling. Inhaling up, agreeing with your lungs, exhaling down, collapsing, agreeing with your lungs again. Yeah, we're going for a full 50. We're almost there. I'm going to lean on Autumn, who's off camera, to tell me when we hit 50. Because I have stopped counting. Seven more. And that softness is not just on the impact, it's on coming up so that your lower back doesn't, your hips don't smash into the ground when you sit up. So you melt down and melt up. Melt. When I say down and up, I mean the back goes down. And let's say when the hips come down, melt them down so the chest comes up. Now let's take a little break on that. Uplifting heaven again. Two. Inhale up, big breath, exhale, wash the breath as a color down the arms and palms and fingertips. And let's get some stretch in there as well so we don't just, uh, actually, let's get some dips and then we'll go to the stretch. Let's go for uh, 50. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. That's not keeping my butt off the ground, my leg is all supporting. If you want to utilize the breath with this, exhale, push through, inhale, exhale. Now 
and finishing with great form, then uplifting heaven again. So we'll give ourselves a nice little stretch here and strap the knees to one side. <clears throat> Kneeling up. Next time down the other side. Inhaling up. Exhale down. Do this way. Do it twice each side. Notice that I have one hand on top of the knees. Other hand looking, other, my eyes on the middle finger of the extended hand. Do I best to keep my back flat on the ground and feel the distance between the knee, the shoulder, the knee extending the opposite way of the same shoulder. So my right knee and right shoulder. Switching sides again. Left knee, my right hand on top of it. And looking toward my left hand. Inhaling up, feeling my spine extending upward, lengthening the spine, and then looking on the middle finger. Do I have to melt my shoulder down? Inhale up. All right, so now we're going to make circles with the body. This is great. I think we should switch 25 each side, going down, up, making circles. We go back up a little bit, you see. Yeah. I might need to do rotation because I'm getting dizzy. Uh, dizzy? Okay. So I might need to go like back one this way and then back the other okay, way. Okay, that's fine. Instead. Yeah, and, and, and a big part of, of staying, keeping the, this, the breath grounded is breathing into the lower dantian, the belly. You mean to avoid dizziness? Yeah, to avoid dizziness. And that goes for pretty much everything. Really? Yeah. So the more you can keep your, your idea... Your, your cent central awareness in your belly while you breathe and spin, do any kicks, etc. It's going to help you, uh, help your, uh, and in my experience, helps my awareness um, stay downward rather than like feel dizzy and, and as if all my energy is trapped upward in my head. So with this exercise, hands on the knees, as if you're a car, like you're a seat. You think of yourself as a seat rather than you sitting in a seat. So you're the seat and the seat goes to the side. Notice that I slammed right there. I roll on my back to the other side and then I use my arm to pop up at my abs. And now I'm seated facing the other direction. I go to the side again, I roll on my back, I pop up and you keep on using the same mechanic over and over again. And you'll notice that as you do this, you're actually tracing the perimeter of a circle, if you do it correctly. So you're rolling like a ball in a circle. And this is, if you can hear part of me landing into the ground, that means I need to do more work softening. So I'm really doing my best to softly come down, come up, and eventually you speed it up. But you're going to get a lot of ab exercise out of this. It's going to really work your abs, your core, from just slowly going down, slowly going across, slowly coming up.
And then again, you can speed it up. Slow it down. Really work it. I'm gonna move away from the camera a bit. got to be 50, right? Okay. Yeah, just, uh, I've lost count once again. So, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll put the hammer twice. Reach across, you know, spin up. Really push here and extend. So you're extending, rotating the shoulder, lift the spine, uh, the hip, push the sit bones to the ground, exhale. Switching over. Inhale, fingers being pulled by the breath, upward, other hand extending down, and then soften the shoulder, reach up, sit bones into the ground, spit up, time each side. And let's work this exercise. Uh, you can just put your socks just so you can get a sense of this exercise. Making sure your feet can slide. My feet are on the floor. And you're gonna, only my heels will touch. I'm gonna push my hands up. I'm gonna slide my foot forward, keeping my hips off the ground, and slide my hips back behind me. I'm actually gonna move my hands up a little bit because I have the mat here blocking me from pulling my feet back more. So it's affecting the range of motion. So I'm just gonna adjust, bring my hands up, my body up a little more. Again, my heels are on the ground. I have socks on. You can put a towel underneath your feet. Just allow you to slide forward and then slide behind your arms. Slide forward, behind, do 20. Body weight exercises are awesome. Inhale deep, exhale. Stretch the shoulder. I'm gonna stretch it right away. Left side, inhale deep, exhale. I'm gonna push my arm, take my palm, push the shoulder down just to reach across the body. Do my best to keep the arm in a semi straight line across my shoulder line here. As straight as possible. One more time each side. Switch. Reach behind. See here. Grabbing. Stretch. Or if you can't reach, just reach with their. If you can't touch the fingers, they just aim for the touch. Eventually you'll get there. And switch. Just move the neck around real quick. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three. This is a very like nice soft workout. Good yeah, for the technique. So uh, next, let's make sure that we have uh, <clears throat> some of our hipscape. Uh, drills going on. So like I love I love hipscape or, or the hip escape in jujitsu. Obviously lifting up and turning, pushing out. If I could do the shrimp down or uh, hipscape up, I would. Uh, I don't want to slide all over my mats. But this is gonna be this is a great exercise to do anyway. So bumping up the hip bump up and then the hip is going to escape through the triangle of one of the legs 
So if I want to go left, my right leg pushes up, my hips turn underneath, going outward as if I'm going through my legs here, pushing my hands down to essentially get some more distance. So do the same on each side, up one and then side two. And we'll go for that 50 in total, 25 each side. Hey, do you have a question? Yeah, sure. So when I go to this side, in real life, my body's going to go that way, right? Oh, what do you mean in real life? Like if I was actually doing the full push, when I go like this, my body's going to go back, right? Yeah, and notice that you're, you're using your shoulder is actually a pivot point here. So my shoulder is a pivot point and my hips are moving through. So my weight is actually on my shoulder and on my heel. Okay. So it's, an, it's important that you actually feel from step one when you lift up and you have your hands here to guard and your elbows are close to, the, uh, to your floating ribs. So you bump up and then you're going to turn pushing the hands down. Just the hands, elbows, hinging on the elbows and the hips shoot through. My weight is on my shoulder and on my heel. So go for it. Okay, so another note is that once you lift up here, you're going to stay up. So you're gonna lift up and then you're gonna stay up, meaning that you're, you, will never, you won't touch down again. So you bump up, and then you escape. Notice that my hips are actually not touching the ground here. I could slide my hand under, even though there's only like a few inches of space. Let's go for it again. So one, two, it's a one, two. One, two, one, two. So you, and then you rewind it. So up, side, back up, down. Up, up. And really go for the, the yoga. Think, think of the yoga uh, extension for this. So really allow yourself to feel like you went up all the way, pushing the heels into the ground, and, lit, and that by nature lifts the hip. And then once you have that structure, then you shift. And it's as if you're pushing with the foot and pushing with the hands to get away. And then you come back and drop it down. In the gym, I remember it's like sliding. Yeah, so the slide, so that all the drills build off of each other and train certain core mechanics. So it's important to note that all I'm saying is you remember sliding. So I'm going to do the slide now. So we're here, blah, blah, slid back. Okay. So I just slid back. So I just did the same mechanic, but now I, I, Got I, it. I moved. Thank you. Sure. And also think about pointing your hips to where your shoulders are. And you may want to stand up and just take a look at me real quick too, just to get the angle, so you can see that how where my how my butt is going up. So it goes to the ceiling, and then it goes toward my hips, and then down. Ceiling, as I push away, goes toward my hips, and back.
sometimes I forget how like intense these the, this could be just as a workout by itself. Would you like one of these mats or two of these mats? No. Okay, it might be very helpful. Yeah. You know, my coach has always said that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was like push hands on the ground, and I always love that. And they're the ones who brought me, uh, Coach Josh Waitzkin and Dan Caulfield brought me to John Machado, Professor John Machado, of the Machado brothers, and I'm always grateful for that because they, you know, especially as I'm like working to, uh, strengthen my back, my core, my neck. Just that one exercise does everything that I need to be doing. You know, I need to be working my hips, I need to be working my neck, I need to be working my back. I need to be doing yoga and extending in a particular way, especially that particular uh, way. And uh, I need to have that, the core strength, um, deep in my core strength. So like all this is happening, this one exercise, and I'm still getting to use the Tai Chi breath work and visualization concepts so still everything motivated by the breath which helps you train the willpower so you don't get caught up in your muscles you don't want your movements of your anything any training that you do for anything martial arts or otherwise you don't want to get caught in the mechanics so much that you can't free your mind through the body really feel the circulation really feel the energy feel all the benefits not get lost like oh some people think free your mind is like oh I'm, I'm not even there anymore I'm just working out that's great that's an awesome experience I'm talking about really being able to move your consciousness through the exercise without feeling caught in any particular part of the body 
to move it at will. So the breath and the visualization is very important in helping to achieve that, and that's uh, a great example of this exercise being done well. Um, uh, being done, uh, <clears throat> great example of applying that to this exercise or any other one. So we're gonna take the, the hands and we're just gonna go into a plank a moment just to hold that for a minute. Make sure that you have, you're gonna move a little bit so you can see that you don't want your hips falling, you're gonna want your butt up. You wanna really have it balanced, allowing the lower back muscles to do some work and allowing the abdominal muscles to create a floor, essentially, like a base right here for you while you're holding up. The eye line is above the hands. So you don't wanna be looking down at the hands. You wanna be looking a few inches above to keep the, the posture going all the way through the base of the skull. So if you find your neck dropping down, especially like you're looking at a cell phone, to auto lift your head a bit and look above your hands. There you go. And also, allow yourself to get that extra work by pushing through the shoulder blades. Allowing the protraction of the scapula pushing through. And then of course, always bringing your body, your awareness back to the breath, inhaling into the lower down chin. And exhaling through the limbs to deepen the experience, and then you can just pull back and stretch a bit. Forehead down, fingers reach it. Really great. All right, what's next? So we're gonna do as wonderful jujitsu move, but we're gonna do a move before it. I'm gonna show the move, but then we're gonna do a move before it to warm us up for it. So on your back, you're gonna be waving the we're gonna wave the feet outward, and then we'll wave them inward. But before we do that, we're going to warm up the hips a bit more, and we're gonna go for a nice switching to the side of one, and then to the other, and coming up. So. It's a wonderful exercise I've, I've really integrated into my, my training routine. I love it. So we're gonna go for 25 each side, that's a total of 50, and rotating down. The way I do this exercise, I think about throwing a round kick, a low round kick, and getting that torque in the hip. Make sure the knees touch the ground. And then on the other side, my left leg round kick, I can do it upward easily, but not across as much and not downward as much. So this is where I need to do some work and I have to really push for it. So, well, of course you push gently because you're warming up. This exercise has really been helping me drop that knee across and integrate my obliques and the hip power and the alignment with the shoulder. See how my alignment on my right shoulder is pretty good. My alignment on my left, I have to work on. You can flex the foot if you'd like, if you feel any pressure on your kneecap. That'll help you keep the joint safe. And you can start to speed it up too, so you feel more loose. The breath work and visualization here. Inhaling up, exhale, wash the color down through the knee. Shoot the color through the knee. The breath has a color, whatever color intuitively comes to you, from the belly, pushing down through the knee. And then inhale, pull it back up to the belly, Exhale, pull it, push it right back out through the knee. Especially through the twist. 
you want to be able to feel the breath work visualized going through the knee. I can't stress this enough. Visualization, using exercise to train your ability to visualize is one of the most important things you can do in life for anything. It applies to everything you do in life. So I'll talk about that in greater detail in other videos. But I highly recommend you experience it for yourself because you'll find that it'll give you a deeper experience of anything you're doing. Breathing through anything you're doing, more so visualizing the breath, moving through the motion. We're gonna push the color through the kneecap and out. Inhale, draw it in. Exhale up. In. Exhale up. And with that, it's helping me trace the mechanics, the muscle movement, the bone alignment. It's helping me get a deeper sense of internal visualization of my own body, as if I have a camera going through my body so I can see the alignment of the joint. I can see it with the mind's eye because my senses are that much more activated. Wherever you think about in the body, wherever you put your attention, the blood circulation increases. So, just think about that for general awareness. Wherever you want to start to put your mind, you want to have greater amounts of data coming to you consciously. And this is all about being conscious of the things that are happening around us. A lot of stuff happens unconsciously, unconsciously in our body, like digestion. And there's something called the automatic mind, which does that in the body. And it took a long time for us to evolve because people used to have to think about, like early, early, early on, organisms had to think about their digestion. So we've evolved to a place where we don't have to consciously think about it. The unconscious is doing it. The body is doing it for us. So we want to keep on being conscious, bringing things into conscious mind that are not, not something that we're as focused on right now. You got 50? Yeah. Nice. I lost count, so I'm going to do another five on each side. I got to keep my back hand, the heel of the palm, bowing more to get a bit more the proper stretch. Notice it was difficult for me on that side. Much easier for me on this side. So that just means that I'm less flexible on my left. And I gotta work that much more intently. Nice. Okay, so let's do uplifting heaven twice. Then we're going to keep our heels down like this. And we're going to push up and lift the hips. Open the arms up. Open the chest up. Notice that my hips are a little low, so I got to lift up. And stretch out the shoulder. Until you put some tension in somewhere, you want to stretch it out. It'll help with the muscle recovery, greater muscle density, muscle growth, repair. And on the kidney, and walk the finger down, pull forward. Make sure your posture is straight when you do this. Gently exhale like you're opening a door. I have my elbow lifting my fingertips up. Tuck down, other side. Back of the hand, top of the hand, on the kidney. So liver, just under that, kidney, 
walking the fingers down, 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 pulling down on an angle 45, lifting up, taking that same vector and changing the angle of the vector, and pulling forward. Lift the chest, push the sit bones to the ground. Exhale. Inhaling deep. Exhale. Small, wonderful movements here that we're doing. We gotta go right back into the original motivation, which is here. So what is this? If you don't know in jiu-jitsu, um, it's really great for dealing with someone's clothing, wrapping your, your arms, your legs around someone's arms, or are into particular pockets of clothing to help conduct the movement of someone's arms. It's really, really great stuff. So we're going to wave the feet out 25 each side, and then wave the feet in 25 each side. So circles out, 25. Notice I'm keeping my head off the ground, chin tucked in, hands up, my hands are up. And really put the mind through. Don't just wave your legs. It should, your legs, you want them to feel like your arms in terms of your awareness and sensitivity. So use your toes to help guide the direction of the feet. Allow the hips to move. Notice that my hips are moving. So, so that my hips are, are a little more open. Oh, look at my hips. Mm -hmm. And then reverse it. And when you keep your, your elbow, your hands up, make sure for when you're playing jujitsu, keep them t uh, small. And I'll use the word tight, but I don't mean tight in terms of musculature, like tight muscles. I mean just small. So no space between your elbows. You don't want to keep your elbows up like you're boxing because you're going to get them pushed down to the ground by somebody very easily. So you got to keep them closer to your ribcage, keep the hands tight, closer to the face. Just staying smaller so that you can have these windshield wipers on your face to help defend. So it make, make somebody work to get that arm rather than they give them the arm up here or up here or up here or up here. And come on up. Two uplifting hands. I like those. Those are nice. Really nice. It like prevents um, the hips from feeling as stiff to let them move like that rather than like, you know, those like bicycle play movements, you know? Yes. Yeah, I like the control that we're exercising here. Yeah. So we're going to do uh, at least two other exercises. I think two more should probably be the, the, the right thing to do. One is going to be an actual roll. So we're going to roll over the shoulder, sit up, and roll forward. We're going to do 25 each side. And then we'll do the final exercise. So... Roll back over the shoulder, come up, and then roll forward. Over the shoulder. And of course, I don't want to hit the camera, so I'll make some adjustments here. These exercises, if you don't know how to roll, um, on video is not really the way to learn it. So uh, I will say that there are, are, are I'm sure, many, many great tutorials. I will describe to you how I like to articulate the, the movement for myself, and but I do recommend that you learn um, from somebody in person. Uh, I learned how to fall on concrete first, and uh, that doesn't mean I'm like great at falling on concrete, but I'm saying that's where I like first really learned. And um, so here, 
I'm still keeping my frame. And I'm choosing a shoulder, whatever shoulder I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna move my head to the other side. So I'm gonna go over my right shoulder, I move my head to the left. And it's like start to create this space. So this is gonna be a big, big point for my weight. I'm gonna turn my head the other way. I'm also using my hands for this particular exercise to help push me the other way. So I'm going back and I'm giving my hands a little bit of support, my body a little support with my hands. Pushing back and I turn my head and notice that when I come up, my head's on the other side. My shoulders take the majority of the weight here and I come up. Can you like spot me on it like, while I do it? Sure, do you want to do it right here? Okay. Cause like my, I hurt, it kind of hurt my shoulder last time. Another way to do this uh, to avoid, to, especially for um, if you're just learning to roll, another great way to do it, and there's a, a, a big way, this is the big way, meaning that there's a lot of space, which means it's not as efficient as the small way. The small way is tighter, you're down here. But the big way might be easier for folks who've never done it before, and you're gonna reach your hand through the legs, and the head's gonna follow the hands. So I can use this hand here to, to help bridge my head, my hand, whatever direction I wanna go. If I wanna go left, my left hand and my head are gonna follow as if I'm throwing them through my legs. And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna release my leg and go over. And then you can just keep doing that. You can back it up or you can reverse it, go the other direction. I'm gonna do my right this time. See, big space. Some people can uh, will also reach through here to the hand, but we're just going to stay focused on reaching through the leg. So I'm reaching through the leg, and then I'm just going to release the leg, because I have the ankle now. Notice that my head's out of the way and my weight's on my shoulder. And I'm going to kick off with the feet a little bit. I'm still here. I'm very relaxed. I'm melting into the ground. Very, very relaxed. I just want to avoid the Christmas tree, which is still up. <laughs> so... Can you walk? Yep, watch it. Autumn. Beautiful. Nice. Slow. Awesome. That's great. Okay. And so, so that was excellent. And the cool thing about this is that you'll be able to gauge your strength, uh, your progress through your control, which is going to be abdominal control. So the more control you have over your abdominal muscles in this particular, at this angle, the more you're going to be able to slow yourself down. So that's why it's important to do it slowly. Or, you know, you can, you can do it at a, at a pace that's comfortable for you, but then start slowing it down even more so you can really feel the work. Again, I'm gonna do this big rather than small. I'm, I'm gonna do a small one right now. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a small one so you can see what I'm getting at here. So the small one. I'm rolling to the side and not straight. That. That, that's, I think it's fine to roll to the side if you are just getting used to the roll. Because sometimes just getting used to the experience of rolling is the thing to, that you just need. Because right, I'm supposed to end up over there, right? Uh, if you roll with your right shoulder right now, you're going to end up over here. So that's correct. Yep, you got it. But, but I'm not going there. It's okay. So the reason you're not going there is because you're, rather than staying here, your abs are, are giving out and you're going this way. Well, I guess maybe I'm not engaging the abs. You know? Exactly. So not, they're not giving out, I'm just actually not using them. Yes, yeah, that is, and that's what I, that's what I said, yes. So okay. you, want, you want to engage them. Okay. And go. Okay, got it. Yep. And if you fall to the side multiple times, again, it's totally fine. Like what you want to achieve is you want to get used to, the very, at the very least, how it feels to get yourself beautiful. You did it. Awesome. So you want to feel just how it feels to roll, first and foremost. And then once you get used to that, then you can start aiming. <laughs> but just make sure you're not around anything you're going to knock down. So here's the smaller version. Here, I'm playing here, playing here. My hand is going through, through here. So this is the small version. My head is gonna follow. I go up, I go over, and I can come back. Watching out for that, those candles. We got some candles. Oh. Actually, no, I'm gonna 
Now you're going to mess around with the candles over here. All right, so here we go again. Small version in front of the camera. Reaching through here. Going down. Notice that I can also look straight up. I can look straight up at the ceiling. That's gonna that eye line is gonna help me. So now I'm really just right here, relaxing. I can allow my, I can go into a yoga move. Just grab the inside of my feet. Just allow my my knees to flay, relax. But instead, I'm gonna keep going, 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 going. So eye line, eye line is another super important concept that we talk about on a regular basis. We want you want your eye line to um, you want to be in control of where you're going, where the head is facing. A lot of times, that's the direction. Fingers, nose, eyes. So here, you can do the big version again, reaching through, head going through. My eyes are looking straight back, and now they're going to look straight up. So I was looking back, I'm looking up now. I'm gonna keep my eyes on a target above my head, and that's allowing me to, oh, this might be very helpful, allowing me to, to stay, keep my posture as I go in the direction that I wanna go. So my eyes go from forward to looking through. Do it again. Here I am, my eyes are forward. I'm gonna go 45 degrees. I'm reaching through. I'm gonna look where I'm reaching. So now my eyes are looking directly at that angle. And now as I shift to my shoulder, see this hand that I'm gonna give up, my eyes go up there. And that's, where we go. Beautiful eyeline, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I like super important. Little details. Okay, I'm gonna do a smaller one over here. Reaching through. Go up. Use the abs and come up. I literally have candles over here and a Christmas tree over here. It's a whole thing. <laughs> so Small yes, I love training in small spaces. Actually, I, I learned to spar. Um, I did most of my training uh, with my father and um, my like training brothers, who were all his students, uh, in my dad's like studio apartment in the West Village. So, I, I, not most of my training. Obviously, most of my training was not there. But what I mean is like my foundational training with group um, sparring, etc., Sharp corners everywhere, things that could break and be knocked down. Obviously, moving things that were like really super valuable, uh, but having a TV right there that you could break and all this other stuff. So, really, really cool, um, great experience of just making sure that you don't smash into stuff, be aware. And if you do stunt work, like when we do stunts for our show Justice for Hire, which you should, all, of course, check out on TikTok at Justice for Hire, and anybody can join the cast. Uh, it's like a martial arts cinematic universe we're doing people all around the world. But when we shoot scenes, the first thing you do is you look for corners. The second you walk into a room as a stunt coordinator, you look at every sharp corner and make sure that those corners are everyone's aware of them, that you can cover those corners up for the stunt performers, actors that are going to be in the space, um, and uh, just make things as safe as possible. If you can't cover a corner, making sure that uh, minimizing the amount of action that happens near a very sharp corner where someone could get hurt. So training around corners is fantastic for about space control, spatial awareness, etc. Now let's stretch uh, before we do our last uh, exercise. We're going to do our an arm exercise and um, our last exercise. So we're going to take one foot up and kick it across the body. Look to the other side. One leg straight. Inhaling up, drop it down, bring the other leg up, kicking it across the body. The leg should be parallel to the other arm, hand, cross. Uh, the way that my shoulder, my last roll, uh -huh. the way that my shoulder collapsed into my pectoral was a little sketchy. What do you mean sketchy? Okay. 
It feels like it like folded. Which shoulder? Like the, the shoulder. right shoulder. It feels like. Not like, the same shoulder that got the injury. No, no. It feels like it feels like basically it collapsed into it and put pressure onto my pectoral. And how, how do you feel now? It feels like a sharpness in my pectoral. Huh. But I think it's because I, it's because of the um, my, because of the angle that it hit on the ground. It like they both kind of hit each other instead of a smoothness. I think you need to be using mats. Honestly. Like, and, and so I think there's many factors that are going on, but I think you need to, if you're doing rolls, you should be taking at least one of these lanes and, and utilizing it. Because it'll, it'll just minimize um, pressure okay. on joints. So next time we'll do that. Do you want one now? The last no. exercise? No. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Because there, I don't feel like one, I'll, like, I feel like I'll go off the mat a lot. Well, I mean, but that's part of the game. Part of the game is, like, keeping yourself on the mat. Why don't you take one half, okay? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Next one. Okay. So, we're going to do one more arm exercise. Well, we do uh, before the last exercise, and then we'll do a, a finishing arm exercise. So, right now, we're going to do these uh, these push-ups that uh, the snake push-ups. There are so many different names of them um, and for this, but I love it. And on the side... Spreading the legs out, going down, coming up. So I'm gonna do it facing the camera, and then we'll go back as well, but my feet, my socks are on the floor, so therefore it's gonna make it harder for me to control coming back. So I'm putting my socks on the mat now. So here we go, we're gonna go for, uh, let's go for two sets of 10. So I just go to one set of 10, we'll be fine. Up, and then reverse it. Beautiful. As a matter of fact, on the last one, let's do one more so we go for 11. On the last one, exhaling down, making sure that your chin is grazing but not actually touching the ground, almost touching, looking up, push through the shoulders so you don't keep them going near your neck, ears push away, allow the hips to fall, inhale deep, exhale, look in one direction, and allow one hip to favor the ground. Exhale through, deep breath. Exhale through. Inhale, switch side. Exhale. One hip favors. Inhale, and then. When you go back, leave with the tailbone going up. And then, top lift to heaven twice. Last one. This last exercise is gonna be fun. Uh, let's see. We're going to we're gonna come up. So let me actually move this camera up a little bit. We're gonna go from standing. There we go. Back a little bit. There we go. So we can go. One, two, and we're going to sit. So, one, two, sit, 
Boom. Roll back. Come up. And you're going to come up in a proper stance. So everything's going to be uh, more technical here. We're going to roll back. And we don't need to actually go all the way over the shoulder. We're just going to roll back kind of similar to what we did earlier. Rolling back. Coming up. Notice that one leg is out and the other one is guard. So I can get ready to fight down here. But I'm actually going to stand up and I'm going to throw a one-two. And that one-two, all of it's coordinated with the breath. So the one-two I just did while doing this explanation was disconnected from breath, meaning I went like this. And disconnected breath punches are actually great to counterbalance with connected breath punch, uh, punches. So you, you see a lot of people doing disconnected breath. They don't necessarily know how to do the visualization of breath work. They might exhale with a punch or inhale with a punch, but they may not visualize with it in a similar way. So um, just being conscious of the soft visualization through here. So I might inhale. I'm going to inhale on my jab, exhale on my cross. And then I'm going to come down. When I say come down, I mean I'm going to kick my back leg. If I'm throwing my right cross, my right is my back leg. I'm going to kick the back leg forward. I'm going to switch every time we do this. And we're going to do... Can you show me how to get down again? We're going to do 12 on each side. So we're going to go one, two, kick the back leg forward to sit. Very similar to the side. If you do judo, one of the side fall uh, break falls is you... Work the sweep as if you're being swept, and you sweep, sit down, and you use, and notice that I use my forearm to be my, um, uh, to break my fall, and I sat down. So we're gonna do a hybrid of that. We're gonna kick the foot forward. So, one, two, kick the foot forward, sit down, boom, roll back, come up, get ready for your your posture, boom, posture here, get down, and then come up, boom, boom. Or you can come up to, boom, boom, switch sides, kicking up, switch back, coming up, boom, coming up, switch, boom, boom, and back. Boom, boom, sit back. And again, I'm doing my best to be very light for my neighbors downstairs. So I'm not doing hard impact on the ground. Very light. Come up. Switch sides. One, two. Mm. Another note on the lightness. Because I want to go so light, I'm being even utilizing my palm a bit for the beginning of my break fall, which is actually, again, certain schools of thought, incredibly dangerous because you could fall and hurt your, um, break your wrist by putting your hand out to break your fall rather than using the forearm. So just be uh, conscious that I'm aware of, uh, for the sake of uh, uh, my neighbor right now, I'm being very cautious about the pressure I'm making on the ground. So I'm gonna come back up and one, two, Also notice that I'm favoring a side. So that means that I'm falling similar to the judo's um, sweep fall where I'm favoring the side of the leg that I'm kicking out. So if I kick here, I'm gonna favor the obliques and the forearm here. Boom, I'm coming up to the side and then pushing up, boom, boom. Ready to fight here, switching legs, boom, boom. Take this one out. Boom. Favor the side, come up, switch the legs, boom, boom, kick out. When you say switch legs, are you switching your stance or no? Yes. Or are you just switching the kicking leg? I'm switching my stance, okay. coming up, one, two, and I'm switching, boom, here, step it back. Boom, throw on the cross. I kick the leg forward. Gentle break fall, favor the side. My extended leg is the one that bends when I come down. So this extended leg 
then bends. And now you're in your, now you're in a stance. So you actually allow yourself to feel this stance for a second. So I'm here. This is a playing position. I shift forward. This is a playing position. This is a playing position. Elbow on the inside or outside is someone grabbing your gi or your coat and you're pulling them off of you by bringing your arm inside. And I'm gonna come up and switch. Boom, boom. Kicking back. Boom, boom, right here. Switch the legs, boom, boom. Also, note that I'm very aware that I'm making the sounds boom, boom. By making those sounds, I'm also disconnecting from the breath work visualization. So I'm aware of that, but I want to make sure people feel the clarity of, the, uh, of when the impact is happening. Switch the legs. Boom. One, two. Kick forward. Boom. Down here. Notice that I'm bracing here. Boom. Getting ready. Come in, boom. Now I'm ready to play from here. I stand up, I'm ready to fight here, but I'm actually gonna switch my stance. Bang, step back, boom, throw another one. Leg forward. Here, here, coming up. Boom, boom. So you have it twice. Get you for a stretch. For a stretch. Reach behind, stretch. Reach behind, stretch. And finally, last exercise for the arms. Very similar to the previous exercise, but instead of keeping your legs wide and going down, this was the previous exercise, now up. Instead, bring the feet shoulder width apart and parallel. Look how high my butt is. Bend your knees a little bit, come forward like you're doing a push-up, bring the body back. So, forward, back. Forward, back. Now really work the shoulders. It's really much easier than a push-up. It's a great way to build up confidence and strength. It works the shoulders in a wonderful way. 
It doesn't feel easier than a push. Because the gravity of the knee is pulling you down. And you're going to use the hips to help you lift up. So here, bend the knees, bring the hips back. Now, as you can see, this angle. Do 12. I think that was 12 from that. Seven. Twice. Top and bottom. Gentle bounce. Gentle bounce. Spinning the fingers, the elbows, for a gentle bounce while the arms are circling. And then you reverse the direction. Gentle bounce. Gentle bounce upward. So my arms are cutting down, up. Very gentle. Switching my hands, which one's in front of the other, each time. And then, classic Kung Fu, Tai Chi exercise, very helpful with heart. Flick the fingers down at the apex in the front. Flick them up at the apex in the back, keep them relaxed in between, and on the fifth one, each time, bend the knees, pump. Every five, up, down, nice little pump. Tai Chi. A very Tai Chi moment. Keep the head forward first. Very relaxed breathing, free breathing. You can coordinate the breath with this, but you don't have to for this particular exercise. I'm doing free breathing right now, catching my breath. My arms are gently banging into the kidneys and the spleen and the liver. So gentle banging massage. Not hard, but gentle. And then I'm going to release the back leg, wherever the momentum is going, the, the trailing leg is going to pivot like you're throwing it across in boxing. Keep your head forward for this. Eyes locked on something. And then bend the knees and go up. Keep the eyes forward for this. One arm is going above, over the shoulder. The other one, the back hand is going on the kidney. So now we've added another layer of dynamism to the power upward dynamism, not just side to side. And now we're gonna release the head so the head turns with the whole body. through this and then bring it back to side to side with the pivot but this time the head is moving with it the head can also look directly behind if you'd like this is very helpful if you're doing Tai Chi push hands or certain types of uh, what we call cranks for their upper body throws in Greco-Roman wrestling very helpful looking with and also in judo just looking where you want to throw pretty much every throw here. and then keep the feet we're going to lock them back into shoulder width apart and parallel keep the head turning and 
how we're going to go into if we have it. And one yoga stretch, the basic first yoga stretch, feet two fists apart, or actually underneath the sit bones, cut the hips in half, half it halfway between each hip, suck in the belly button, lift the collarbone. Make sure you get that alignment first. Weight on the heels. Imaginary string lifts you from the top of the head and suck in the belly button even more. Imaginary string pulls the belly button back. All the abdominal muscles contracting into the point of the belly button, like they're being flushed. With the collarbone, interlace the thumbs, go up. Suck in the belly button, lift the collarbone again, fingertips again, reestablishing posture. Then visualize all the muscles in the lower back lifting out of the hip line. Up, hold. Suck in the belly button. Lift the collarbone again, fingertips again, reestablishing. Lift the middle back out of the lower back. Once you get the lift, hold, suck in the belly button, lift the collarbone, fingertips again. Lift the upper back out of the middle back. Hold, suck in the belly button, collarbone, fingertips. Lift the shoulders out of the upper back. Hold, belly button, collarbone, fingertips. Maintain the posture, exhale, drop only the hands, then drop the chin to the collarbone and collapse one vertebra at a time. Exhale, from the neck down. Soften the shoulders and everything. Pull up the arms and hang, once you get all the way back, weight on the heels, knees straight, lock the knees, collarbone falling straight down, hips being lifted straight to the ceiling of the sky above you. Inhale, inflate the lungs with white light. Exhale, use that light to melt everything, all the tension. At least three breaths here. Release the arms, suck in the belly button, one vertebrae at a time coming up as you inhale. Use the belly button pulling in to help you rebuild the structure of the spine. Rebuilding the structure of the spine. Just gonna give myself a few more stretches, bringing out here and reaching up. Switching sides and reaching out, putting my hand on my forearm on my thigh, reaching out, looking at my middle finger, and keeping the hands down, leg in front, back leg straight off the ground. Drop the knee to the ground, lift up, suck the belly button, hips and shoulders square, way up, and switch sides. First by going back. Grab the toe, forehead to the knee, bring and switch, and up. Switch, inhale again. Back down. Hands on the inside, keep this leg straight. Drop the knee down, come forward. Hand on the hip, hand on the thigh, just above the knee. Suck in the belly button, let the collarbone going up. Gently bring the hip forward. And then come back, exhaling, hands reaching to the toe. Inhale deep, lift up. Exhale, melt over. And finally, sit back. Inhaling up. Forward to the knees, exhaling down. Yeah. 
hang up. And just cycling. Sigh. Inhale up. Sigh. And feel a gentle movement of the hips. Side to side. the stretch in the obliques. You can do this. Yeah. And fold in the legs. Work the knee. Other knee. Sit it. Yeah, switch one more time. Back to me. Other knee. Back to center. Second belly butt. Also think I went twice. Neck. Rotate around. Twice. Inhale up. Exhale down. Reverse it. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Close the eyes, inhale in the wet line to the belly. Spread through the whole body. Um, inhale deep. Big bubble around the body. Um, inhale deep. Spread the light as far as you can throughout the whole world, whole universe, all existence. Go for it. Visualize, bring the light back to you, gratitude for the body, the space that you're in, the good people in your life. Thank you guys so much. Happy New Year to everybody. Wishing everyone a wonderful, wonderful 2024. You'll see me on here a bunch. And uh, always check out, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Uh, follow on, on TikTok, but also on my YouTube channel, I put out new stuff, like three videos a day. So there's a lot, a lot, thousands of hours of content all for free on my YouTube. So check that out at Jan's Tai Chi on YouTube. Coach Jan, love you. Signing off. Have a great day.